Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, verse by verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in 2 Kings chapter 9, 2 Kings chapter 9, and we're kind of trekking along here um, um, on our way really to the Babylonian invasion. Uh, I mentioned that because... Uh, that is a turning point in history. In, in history, you're, you're going to see that that is a major turning point in history. Um, and I say that because right now, as we're going through the kings of Israel, uh, these are the wicked kings that's sort of driving the nation to this judgment of God that he will continue. He, he, it's going to be something unprecedented where he will completely um, wipe out Israel. But we'll get to that more when we get to that time. And actually we'll see some of it when we get to the end of this book. So each in, end of Kings and Chronicles kind of ends with this judgment. But right now we're seeing these wicked kings, how God is dealing with them, and then the judgment that they're, they're going to face. Um, so, Second Kings chapter 9, let me also show you the, our chart again. Now, remember we're talking about, we're currently in the, the, the kings, the book of Kings, centers around the kings of Israel and at this time there if you want to see what how bad a civil war could be where you have one nation but two kingdoms um, so the foolishness of people this is the sidebar who think a civil war in America would be good who think secession would be good end of sidebar because I, that, that that in itself is the study but the kings of Israel the what's called the northern tribes which were ten tribes the capital was Samaria and uh, and then when we get to the Chronicles we would see the kings of Judah so you would have two tribes uh, and, 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 and what's eventually would become the region of Ju Judea of course, this capital is Jerusalem, and one of the interesting thing about that, as I digress here, and I'm going to get back. Uh, let me just go on because I, again, I, I can get too far in it. But these are the kings. We we get more into them um, when we get into the Chronicles, and one of the purpose of this here will be the bloodline of Jesus. So right now we're right at Jehu, Jehu. Um, so let's get to it because this is, um, quite a study here as these studies are. All right. Verse one, the prophet Elijah, Elisha called one of the sons of the prophets and said, tuck your mantle under your belt, take this flash of oil with you and go to Ramoth, Ramoth Gilead. And when you get there, look for Jehu, son of Jeho Jehoshaphat, son of, uh, Nimshi. Um, um, okay, go in and, and get him away from his colleagues and take him into an inner room. Take Then take the flash of oil, pour it on his head, and say, This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Now, I, I want to just kind of make one point here that Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, remember these names were very common. So Jehoshaphat is not to be confused with Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, during the time of um, um, Ahab. Okay, so, um, so you can see here, here's Jehu, right, and then here's uh, Jehoram but look down remember uh, this Jehoshaphat um, where am I at here 
kings of Judah, uh, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, okay, um, these names, I, I'm showing you how interchangeable sometimes these names are, so Jehoshaphat, um, which is kind of interesting because his son is Jehoram, but it's different than Jehu here, all right, all right, so, um, um, one other thing before we get this uh, going to too is doing the time of Elijah, which from this perspective is not that far apart, you know. But during the time you remember, and the reason I say that is because remember Jezebel is still alive, so you had the time where. Ahab is killed, but Jeho but Jezebel is still, in a sense, the power behind the power. She's still alive. She's going to meet her end. We're going to see that later on in this chapter. But when Elijah had his <coughs> confrontation with the 400 prophets of Baal, excuse <coughs> me, then he ended up killing them. And then Jeho uh, Jezebel said she was going to kill Elijah. He was on the run. He ran from Jezebel. Um. And, and and God in dealing with Elijah, he, you know, he, he basically said, "What are you doing? He, you know, what are you doing?" And he, Elijah, complained that he was the only one serving God. God told him, "Well, you really not. Got seven thousand people who haven't bowed the knee. In fact, they're not only the seven thousand, but the hundred prophets that Obadiah hid fifty in the cage." But he 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 gave. Jeho he gave he gave Elijah three commands. One, anoint Elisha to be his successor. Anoint Jehu as king of Israel, and anoint Hazael, the king of Aram. Right. Um, but Elisha only went and found Elisha and anointed him, threw the mantle on him. So now my point is, so as we move on, we now see Elisha actually now fulfilling God's command to anoint Jehu as king. In other words, Elisha should have done this. All right. Um, verse 4, so the prophet. Now, again, let me read verse 3 again. Take the flash of oil. Pour it on his head and say, This is what the Lord says, I anoint you king over Israel. Open the door and escape. Don't wait. Now this this young prophet will do that. Unlike the other prophet, you remember during the time the Jeob uh who God told him to go into the city, go in, don't talk to anybody, don't have lunch with anybody, make your prophecy and come out. He did that, came out, old prophet came out and told him Hey, God told me to tell you to come back. Well, actually, he said an angel told me told me to tell you to come back. He did, and then the same guy said, "Well, you messed up, man. Cause God, God told you not to come back. You disobeyed him. You're gonna die. And he and there's a lion waiting for you. That's exactly what happened." Verse four says, "So the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived, uh, the army commanders were sitting there. So he said, I have a message for you, commander.' Jehu asked." For which one of us? He answered, for you, commander. Now, just from this right, this right here, I, I don't see, okay, we, we don't see how this looks odd. Okay? But we don't, we don't see that. They're going to take this as odd, but I'm just kind of pointing it out. We, we don't see how this looks odd. Verse 6. So, Jehu got up and went into the house, and the young prophet poured oil on his head and said, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, Israel. Now, kind of funny he had to say that. Not Judah, but Israel. Verse 7, You are to strike down the house of your master Ahab, so that I may avenge the blood shed by the hand of Jezebel, the blood of my servant, the prophets, and all of the servants of the Lord. Now, 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 one thing to, to take note here, because we don't often see this. We don't often see what how bad things really are. 
we get the glimpse, like this statement here. But things were really bad under the rulership of Ahab and Jezebel. And one of the things you always would note with wicked kings is to increase violence, the sh blood bloodshed. Now keep that in mind because we're going to see this statement come up again. In other words, if we had to have a nightly news right camera like we do today, and even in our nightly news, we don't see how bad sometimes things could be. Um, but if we had one, we would really see just how bloody, how violent things were. Like, for example, if we really, really had well, what's going on in Ukraine, we, we, we get glimpsed. Even with cameras, we get glimpsed. Imagine if they really go blow by blow, you know, street by street, person by person. So Ahab and Jezebel are extremely wicked people, and, and one of the signs is bloodshed. Um, verse 8, the whole house of Ahab will perish, and I will eliminate all of Ahab's males, both slave and free in Israel. Now, if you're reading the King James uh, Bible, it says all the males that pisseth against the wall. I think that adds a little more flair to it. Verse 9, and I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeoboam, the son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, the uh, son of Ahijah. Uh, the dogs will eat Jezebel in the plot of land at Jezreel, and no one will bury her. Then the young prophet opened the door and escaped. Now I want you to keep this kind of in mind right here. This is a prophecy here. I'm going to make a statement later on, but I want you to just kind of log this temporarily here. The prophecy, one, he's going to be king, but then two, you're not going to bury, no one will bury her. Now, that's a prophecy. I want you to keep this in mind. All right, verse 11. When Jehu came out of, of his uh, of his master's servant, I'm sorry, when Jehu came out to his master's servant, they asked, is everything all right? What does this crazy person come to you? Then he said to them, you know, the sword... You know the sort in their rantings. Now, like I say, I don't, I don't know, because we're not giving kind of a detail of why that exchange to them that he seemed crazy. You know the way he, we, we don't see the inflections. Okay. Um, verse twelve. But they replied, "That's a lie. Tell us." So Jehu said, he talked about, he talked about this. And that and said this is what the Lord says I anoint you king over Israel so he didn't go into all the details about how he's going to destroy Jezebel <laughs> verse 13 and each man quickly took his garment and put it under Jehu and put it under Jehu on the bare steps they blew the ram's horn and proclaimed Jehu is king kind of amazing that they did this in line with the Lord's prophecy they didn't try to fight him on it verse 14 then Jehu, son of Josaphat, son of Nimshi, conspired against Jeram. And Jeram and all of Israel had been at Roman Gilead on guard against Hazael, king of Aram. Now remember there was a prophecy on that. Remember Elijah gave Hazael this prophecy that he, and then he looked at, pro, he looked, he, he looked, Hazael looked at him and go, why, why, are, you, why are you starting to cry? And Elijah go, because I know the evil you're going to do to the people of Israel. Uh, verse 15, but the king of Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds that the Arameans had inflicted on him when he fought when he fought against Aram, king of uh, Hazel. Hazel. And Jehu said, if you command us to make me king, then don't let anyone escape from the city to go and tell it to tell about it to Jezreel. Jezreel got up got into his chariot and went to Jezreel since Jerome was laid up there. Jerome was laid up. Jerome. Jeram, I'm sorry, was laid up there. And Ahaziah, king of Judah, had gone down to visit Jerome. Jeram. Now, the watchman was standing on the tower of Jezreel and he saw Jehu's troops approaching and shouted, I see troops. Jeram responded to the rider and sent him to, to meet them and asked him do you come in peace so the horseman went 
to meet Jehu and said, This is what the king asked. Do you come in peace? Jehu replied, What do you have to do with peace? Fall behind me. The watchman reported the messenger reached out, reached them, but hadn't started back. So he sent out a second horseman who went to them and said, This is what the king asked. Do you come in peace? Jehu asked, What do you have to do with peace? Fall in behind me. Again, the watchman reported, he reached them but hadn't started back. Also, the driving is like that of Jehu, son of uh, Nimshi. He drives like a madman. Now, again, I don't know how they're looking at this, but everybody seems to think everybody's a madman or crazy. Verse 21, harness, Joram shouted, and they harnessed his chariot. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, set out each in his own chariot and met Jehu at the plot of the land of Naboth the Jezreel and when Joram saw Jehu match do you come in peace Jehu and he answered what peace can there be as long as there is so much prostitution and witchcraft from your mother Jezebel now here we get a little more we Jezebel is one of a wicked queen she was the power behind ahab but we also see now some of the others of witchcraft she is also of course heavy into paganism but notice this prostitution so she was extremely immoral joram turned around and fled shouting to ahazai it's treachery ahazai then jehu drew his bow and shot Joram between the shoulders. The arrow went through his heart, and he slumped down in his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar, his aide, pick him up and throw him into the throw him on the plot of ground belonging with the Naboth, the Jezreel. For remember when you and I were riding side by side behind his father Ahab, and the Lord uttered his oracle against him. Now this is interesting here, another thought. Notice how, and we go back, when I told you sometimes you don't always get all the details, but here we get this. They heard this prophecy that Elijah said. They heard this prophecy that Elijah said against Ahab. Verse 26, and he says, As surely as I saw the blood of Nabal and the blood of his son yesterday, this is the Lord's declaration, so will I repay you on the plot of land. And this is the Lord's declaration. So now, according to the word of the Lord, pick him up and throw him on the plot of land. And when King Ahaziah of Judah saw what was happening, he fled up the road towards Beth Hagan. And Jehu pursued him, shouting, shoot him too. Uh, so they shot him in his chariot at Ger Pass near Eblim. But he fled to Megiddo and died there kind of interesting because remember his father um, we'll see this later in the chronicle but his father who allied with ahab was rebuked but he actually kind of died with this, this this wicked man verse 28 then his servants carried him to jerusalem in the chariot and buried him with his father's tomb in his father's tomb in the city of david it was the 11th year of joram son of ahab that Ahaziah had become king over Israel. And when Jehu came to Jez Jezreel, Jezebel heard about it. So she painted her eyes, adorned her head, and looked down from a window. Now, right here is where you, it, it kind of, I think there's a misreading. Because the, the, the kind of legacy of Jezebel has been misinterpreted to mean a red dress with red makeup and painted face. And so a lot of Pentecostals and Pentecostals holding this will tell you that um, you know it's Jezebel color, but the Bible never makes that de declaration. She was a very immoral person and a wicked king. Verse 31, as Jehu entered the gate, she said, do you come in peace, uh, Zimri, Zimri, killer of your masters? He looked down towards the window and said, who is on my side? Who? Two or three you two or three units looked down at him and he said throw her down so they threw her down 
and some of the blood splattered on the wall and on the horses and Jehu rode over her in other words he kind of stamped her with the with the horses then he went he went in ate and drank and said take care of this cursed woman and bury her since she's a daughter I find this strange because if you remember he himself remembered the prophecy that uh, Jezebel by prophecy would not be buried verse 35 but when they went out to her they did not find anything but her skull her feet and the palms of her hand now kind of quick that the dogs by the way have eaten her that fast in other words that's what happened the dogs ate her so they went back and told him and he said this fulfills the word of the Lord he spoke through his servant Elijah the Tisbet in the plot of land of, uh, at Je uh, Jezreel, the dogs would eat Jezebel's flesh. And Jezebel's corpse would be like manure uh, on the surface of the field in the plot of land at Jezreel, so that no one would be able to say, this is Jezebel. Now again, again, just kind of funny to me, he kind of knew this, but yet still sought to bury her. You know, kind of weird to me. Um... Again, so we're going to, again, track on. Don't forget to like and share this video. Um, hit that subscribe button and um, by, uh, <laughs> uh, add your comments. All comments are welcome, guys. Look, I'll see you in the next study, in the next chapter. See you next time.